Go ahead and call the City of Prairie Common Council meeting on April the 5th at 6 p.m. to order. If everybody would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, be led by Steve Anderson. Remain standing for the invocation by Pastor Brent Wedding. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you, Lord, for this community that we live in. And Lord, we lift up our leaders before you, our city council, our mayor, God, all of those that are working to make this city a great place. We pray that you would fill their hearts and their minds with wisdom and understanding and integrity. Lord, that they would always do the right thing for this city. We pray, Lord, for our police department, our fire department, that you would keep your hand upon them. We thank you for their willingness to serve. Bless our community, our economy, our school system. Lord, help us to be eternally grateful for all that you have done. We ask your blessings upon this meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Huh? Yeah. Roll call. Anderson. Here. Gustin. Here. Potho. Here. Ramsey. Russell. Here. Sahidashini. I am here. And Wolf. Here. Okay, does anybody want the minutes read or does anybody have any corrections for the minutes? Of I the move we accept them. Okay. Second. Perfect. Roll call. Okay. Anderson? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Clotho? Yes. And not here. Russell? Yes. Diodogeny? Yes. And Wolf? Yes. Okay, do we have any... Um, council liaison communications. I do. Okay, great. This is from Solid Waste District. There will be a change of date of property ownership for responsibility of paying the Solid Waste District annual bill of $30. The initial date was January 1st, but in 2006 it was changed to March the 1st when the Solid Waste Bill was put on the property tax form. It was not changed back to the original date when the bill was removed from the tax form. The assessor's office issues a report of property ownership changes January 1st through December 31st. To avoid confusion and ensure accurate solid waste district billing, the date of property ownership is being restored to January 1st. And uh, also, the bills for 2021 and the updated informational booklets will be mailed tentatively April 5th. Ooh. Great. Anybody else have anything? I've got a couple things. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I talked with Assistant Chief Feller and just talked with uh, Chief Sofianos. Uh, they're supposed to talk with, uh, also, Jeff referred us to Steve Ray, who's a, uh, what does he do? Uh, he's the uh, director, executive director of the North Central Indiana Planning Council. Okay. He's also a grant writer, correct? Yes, he is. Yeah. He and his staff. So, Chief Selfianos and uh, Matt, Matt Feller are going to make an assess needs assessment list, and then we'll get with him in a couple weeks. And um, that's just from the committee that that uh, Miles Mayor put us on. Yes, the was, please uh, overstepping you. No, that's fine. Steve. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're good. Okay. Um, let's see. All oh, that for the the future growth and sustainability that Pete and I are on or facilitate. We're having a big, we're trying to get a big thing for Small Business Month in May. The uh, mayor had said that he was going to proclaim that Small Business Month. I'm not sure if you're still planning on that, but um, anyway, so we're meeting Friday at noon at Smitty's to continue planning for that and small business owners and those who want to help plan those will be there. So. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, the Peru Utilities Board met in March on the 3rd and 17th at the Peru Utilities Building on East Canal. The meetings are open to the public. The board approved the use of property for the Circus City Festival and paved the way for a new substation on East Canal on the 3rd. On the 17th, the board approved disbursements for Grissom Water Development, and there is a 2006 Ford Ranger still for sale. It's got around 75,000 miles on it. 
Um, the Aviation Board met on March 9th at 7 p.m. at the Peru Municipal Airport. February was a slow month for fuel sales due to the two large snowstorms. A special shout out to Chris Solde and Joel Ebert for helping to keep the runway open after the storms. A highlight was the board approved the contracts for the Huey organization and the circus band for the airport's open house on July 31st. Hours will be 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Planning Commission met on the 30th at 6 p.m. at City Hall. After having hearing from Peru citizens, we voted on an alley closure on West 3rd and evaluation, a, vacu a vacation of an unused street on East Canal. It, it was the shortest meeting I have ever attended so far in my lifetime in office. <laughs> Just a little bit of humor. The Civic Center Advisory Committee met on March 20th at 9.30 in City Hall. The committee discussed the use of vendors at the Civic Center and the duties of the event coordinators, which I'm kind of going to have changed to host, maybe. Uh, the news newsletter was released on Facebook. It covered the new rates to use the Civic Center and the services we hope to offer. And that's it. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, P or C, yeah. do you guys have anything? I got just short. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. This is uh, from the county government meeting uh, last time in, in the go room. Uh, the <clears throat> Sheriff's Department is requesting from the city uh, government uh, $25,000 for new tasers. Okay, the uh, ones currently in use are uh, outdated. All right, so they're requesting that. And then I'm, I'm going to uh, ask maybe if Jim can help me, Jim Tidd. Uh, Brooke uh, gave a pre short presentation. She introduced a gentleman, uh, Jim uh, and he's got a new business, and I, I don't have those notes with me. I know that. Uh, do you do you remember? Yes, sir. Okay, could you, can you help us out here sure. just a little bit? Uh, this yeah. Is a, this is a new company that's coming yeah, to the community. It's called Gen 3 Bio. Yeah, Gen 3 Bio. Uh, the person that um, was probably at the meeting that you met uh, is a gentleman by the name of Kelvin Akimoto. Yes, Akimoto. Uh, for several years, they've been doing research and development over at Purdue Research Park uh, in cooperation with <laughs> Purdue, and they're looking at uh, ways to take um, algae from sewage treatment plants and turn it into a usable product. And so anyway, um, and they want to commercialize that, which kind of goes against Purdue with research and development. So Calvin right. decided that they want to uh, start their own operation and privatize uh, this opportunity. So they located. Did it hurt you? I think somebody that's um, somebody on Zoom needs is to mute their not mic. muted. Gloria's mm -hmm. iPad. That located um, here in the community out of Grissom, um, and they'll have uh, several employees over the. Uh, probably at their max would be 20 employees. But the other opportunity that I think, and we're trying to get them introduced, is with Peru Utilities uh, to see if there's a way to use and partner with Peru Utilities in treating some of their algae and waste from the sewage treatment plants as a, as a partnership opportunity. But So that's... Thank you very much, Jim. I had a question. What do you have a startup time for this? Uh, yeah, they've actually began. Uh, they've occupied, started occupying the building April one. Okay. They're probably yeah. not going to. They're getting equipment and stuff in as we speak. The county approved an abatement uh, for them on their initial equipment investment, um, and so I don't think they'll probably be operational, probably to really the June time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Pete, what was the twenty-five thousand dollars for? That's for the new Eight. tasers. Tasers. <coughs> okay. The ones in Kirtland use are very outdated. For the police department. I'm sorry. For the police department. Uh, sheriff's department. Sheriff. Sheriff. Yes. Okay. And thank you again, Jim. No problem. Okay, I don't have any. Uh, personally to report, but Mark Ramsey is not here tonight, and I'm happy to read his notes that he wanted to report on tonight. Um, for animal control, he wanted to report that there's four dogs there. Wabash River, River, Wabash Valley Power is putting a transmission power from McGrawsville to Bunker Hill. It's a seven to eight mile radius. Um, 911, they just signed a five-year contract for renewal. The health department would like to thank all of its volunteers 
along with the nurses and um, and what they've done for the city of Peru and for Miami County. As far as parks go, um, he said the golf course opened on March the 2nd. They have done $974 in green fees, $1,662 in cart fees, 55 season tickets for approximately $20,000, uh, 15688 for cart storage, $142.24 in food and apparel. Uh, he lists the tax and all that. Um, the fund for the cart path is $1,700 for a grand total of $39,995.75. Uh, after 10 days being open and that they have four fundraiser tournaments scheduled um, They did order new carts and those will arrive. Uh, I believe 18 of those will arrive the end of April uh, Seven whole sponsors are still left if anybody's interested in that uh, new projects the nickel pay trail uh, They need to finish grading seating and pave Davis Park uh, continue to work on dead tree removal clean up stump debris work on the parking areas of West City Park, equipment service, and general maintenance. The park department agreed to sign new contracts for West City Park. Um, tables will be available for the amphitheater project this summer. And those were all uh, liaisons from Mark Ramsey and what he wanted to report. Okay, so is that everybody? Okay, so we'll move on to unfinished business, which there are none. Uh, and then from there, we'll go to new business. Uh, on new business, we have Gary Clark uh, from the golf course, and he wanted to uh, talk with us about some money appropriation for golf cart repair and fuels, fuel, I believe. Is Gary on Zoom? Or? There he is. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, hi, Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, what I couldn't understand, I couldn't hear what you said. It was for uh, uh, asking for appropriation for. Uh, yeah, on the on our agenda, it says that you were asking for uh, golf carts fund for golf carts and repairs. Golf cart repairs. Golf carts and repairs. That's what is listed on our agenda. Um, Remember, Gary, you've been taking money out of that non-reverting fund for your parts, and you said you were going to ask for extra money. To be appropriated out of there for that uh, um out of the non-reverting fund correct your irrigation correct, yes. fund is the non-reverting fund right yep right yep um and that's that's basically we were looking at doing that with uh uh the the, the golf outings that we do have where we have to rent golf carts and bring them in we we really don't see nothing out of that um, and the host of the golf out is actually losing money because they're paying like fifty dollars a cart or something, right? And so they figured with that, we would we would make this money back, and then with the uh, uh, addition of the disc golf um, is what the, the board was thinking. Are you talking about to fund the new eighteen carts that you guys uh, voted on? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I, I believe so. Yep. Okay. Um, and then maintenance on them. Uh, I, I don't. I don't need no money really appropriated for maintenance on the carts because we have a maintenance line item as part of the park's budget on, on the park side. Gary, can I ask you? Are you not going to take money out of that fund for other repairs to the irrigation throughout the summer? Right. Yeah, but not for, well, I guess I, I, I thought she said golf cart repairs. No, she said and no. repairs. Okay, yes, no, sorry. Uh, irrigation repairs, yeah. So when I started, I've always used this non-reverting fund, uh, I guess, as an irrigation fund is, is the way I've used it. Um, whether that be, uh, you know, I need to buy a 20-foot section of pipe because a water line busted or glue, wires for the electrical part of it, sprinkler heads, uh, I believe... Uh, I mean, anything irrigation-wise, I've always used this fund for that, and I and I guess uh, that was why I was wanting to talk. Um, I've never really had to ask for an appropriation for that, um, and so I guess if 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 like me and Susan talked, if we need to, maybe we try to put a line item in my budget for irrigation next year. Um, and if not, I guess I'm basically here tonight just to um, ask for permission, and I don't know. 
if I can do it, I guess, for the season. I mean, because I can get into that fund literally weekly. Uh, it could be monthly, um, just depending on, you know, how much of irrigation I'm repairing at the time, which we all know that's a that's a, a huge problem that I battle up there. Um, and yeah. so I guess that's kind of what I'm, I'm here for, because I really can't see myself if a, if a water line busts, I can't wait, you know, till that first Monday of the, you know, three Mondays away to go get a, a 20 foot section of pipe that I, that I run out there to get or whatnot, whether it's down at true utility supply or, uh, you know, ACE if I need 90s or T's or something like that, that I don't have in stock. Uh, so I guess that's kind of basically why I'm here tonight. What have you done in the past? Well, in the past, I've always just, uh, <laughs> I couldn't hear him. So when I started, I, I was under the, when Pat was still here, he told me that, you know, this irrigation fund, and my, my understanding was this irrigation fund is set up just like the cart path fund we set up last year. Uh, it's not part of my budget. A dollar or two, I think it's $2 from every golfer that plays around a golf goes into that. Uh, some of the membership money, whether it's uh, greens fees or your cart fees, goes into this. And I've always just coded it irrigation fund. Um, never up until a month ago. Yes. I, when I talk to the Department of Local Finance and Government, a non-reverting fund is not appropriated money because it doesn't return to the general fund. So she said in order to spend out of a non-reverting fund, it has to do an additional appropriation to be spent. Ah. So we spent money out for carts, and she said then you have to get permission to do a non, or an additional appropriation. So I told Gary he needs to come and explain why he's asking because. Right. So he's just why. coming and explaining tonight, and then we're going to vote on this on um, this at a it's different meeting. It's kind of like the cart, you know, the cart, the horse, but yeah. before the horse, because they already spent the money. <laughs> uh, and then in the course of a conversation with the Department of Local Government, <clears throat> I said, "Well, that's he's been also spending like." Parts and repairs, and she said he can't. You can't spend out of it like that. It has to be appropriated. But like Gary's pointing out, if a water line breaks, he's got to wait three weeks to get the money oh, appropriated. So that's why I told him to kind of, you know, he spent like fourteen thousand dollars last year. Mm -hmm. I said, so what you need to do is have the council appropriate enough money to cover that, and if not, we'll do more, but at least do the cards and enough. To cover his summer for so is he going to bring us a dollar amount back next month or is he got a dollar amount this month that we're supposed to be voting on well, I or told him to sit down and figure out and kind of have a dollar amount. okay so this is just an explanation and we're going to be looking at that in may and then okay. next year we'll look at putting a line item in there yeah because like the streets department they did appropriate out of their non-reverting a thousand dollars yeah so i'm a little bit confused the money's already been spent. Right? Well, we haven't released the check because we don't have it, but the check's been wrote. Okay. But it's already in their budget, correct? It's not in their That's budget. Bad. It's in their non-reverting fund. If it had been in the budget, it had been appropriated. Since it's not in the budget, it's not appropriated money. There's a miscommunication and misunderstanding of how money the unappropriated and non-reverting funds actually work on on the golf course part simply put and this is just <coughs> rectifying and resolving that issue right so we're going to absolutely wait. we're going to wait till next month to appropriate it <coughs> i was told you can go ahead because what she said is the dlgf doesn't have to sign off on this additional appropriation request but i do have to have it to send in that we did it so are we going to vote on it tonight then? Huh? Are we voting on it tonight? You can't. It has to go through the two-month process. But we can go ahead and spend it and with your approval. And you will go through the process. I'll have to advertise and then we'll do the two-week or the two-month consider adopt. But it's already going to be spent if we say yes? Yes, she said it can already be spent. It's their money. Who's she? The DLG rep rep. When it, under these circumstances, yes. So you just presented it tonight, and then next month we'll... He just wants your, to let you know and, and ask your approval to go ahead and spend it. 
What if we table it till we get more clarification? And that means the person is waiting on their money. Why would, what, do, what more clarification do you need? To understand this fully. Well, is, uh, I just had a question. Is, is Gary, are you requesting a, a specific amount of, of money for, for he this? He will be. See, that's, Susan, it's just, if the money's already been spent. It and hasn't exactly been spent, Kathleen. The check was wrote, it hasn't been sent to the people. They, they voted on it at the Parks Board meeting. Yeah. Okay. Those 18 carts. Okay. And then, um, so they voted on it, and then I think they actually ordered the carts, and it looks like the delivery of those carts are going to be here in April, but they haven't sent the check to the cart people yet. I think there's... Okay. It's I think just semantics, you know, and I just want to understand, you know, oh. so... Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That I think that's, explains it. I think that's what, okay. what went down. So it's not ideal, and I think through our no, new budgeting no process, yeah. you know, hopefully we'll have more specifics and we can get out of things that we don't need, like 6000 for cable TV that they're not using, or um, what else weren't they using? We're just being informed. Just being <laughs> Yeah, Basically, so we can actually have yeah, line items. I, we don't need anything know. from us tonight. Let no, just letting you know that we're going to okay. be doing that additional preparation okay. and why. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, Gary. Yeah, that's just why. Thanks, Gary. Questions. And, and I, I'd like to, I could also add something about the, and I think we covered a little bit with the, the, the 6000 for the cable TV is also in the same line item as my water and electric, where I actually end up, uh, uh, when Bob Sambazi was there, he was the one that went and got direct TV. I actually, uh, I suspended that over the winter because I didn't want to be paying that bill over the winter when we weren't using it. And then I went ahead and canceled that because I felt like we didn't need uh, a cable up there. So therefore, we won't have that direct TV bill no more. But that 6000 will go towards uh, water more than likely <laughs> as seems how we go into the red every year in water, which next year or this year when we sat down, like Susan said, with the budget, we're going to try to really... Right. really work out the, the, the problems that, that were there from past... Uh, uh, employees up there in the parks and the golf course and and really uh, get it straightened out and have the line item explaining what we're spending you know out of that line item that, that, that it's there for so right and to right, have yep. a more accurate budget i think is the, the goal and i appreciate you being so frugal about that too i think the yep, other thing i was absolutely. thinking about was the liquor license that we're not going to use i don't know if that falls somewhere that you can use but it's just like we could get rid of all of those things and just have it for things that we are actually going to use like new carts and irrigation. Yeah. So. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, Gary. Um, okay. Thank you, guys. If that's it, then we'll uh, go ahead and go on to Adam Sheets, uh, who's here tonight, and he's a street commissioner, and he's going to talk about um, a request for appropriating uh, money from the non-reverting funds to purchase a roller. Do I need to stand or go? Up? Yeah, you can stand up here if you like. Unless you're, are you a loud talker? I can be. <laughs> there you go. Okay, it would be easier. Okay. I think yeah. if you came up front. Uh, I actually. Gary, you're going to come up, aren't you? That's uh, yeah. Yeah. that's Adam, Adam, not Gary. Adam. 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 I'm sorry. I brought visuals of what I'm actually. I'm kind of a visual guy. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Adam. It's a Bomag 915. It's just a small roller. Thanks, Adam. But it's too. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Trying to help us with our future plans and what we're trying to get done. Wouldn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> you won't okay. be joyriding. <laughs> no, this is serious. I'll stand here. Is this fine? You're good. You're good. Yep. <laughs> so basically, we have a non-reverting account, the street department, street and sanitation, 407. CCI. Technically, a savings account. Basically, our truck rentals, uh, the tax for the bulky items go in it. And all that does is just build and build and build, and then eventually we start purchasing equipment with it. We can only use it for equipment. We can't use it for, you know, everyday maintenance or anything like that. But we also, I guess, have to have it approved um, by you and the government. We're trying to, there, there's multiple things we could use this for. Uh, for instance, I don't know if you've been on these main lately, there's a section of road about 30 feet long. You'll hit it, I think it's in the 300 block, and you're like, I'm sure you guys have felt that. 
Well, we could cut that out, you know, put Peg in there. We could use that to roll in. It's just a small one. Uh, remember, I don't. <laughs> We have one now. You can just drop it for a minute. Yeah, you can take it off. Nobody's close enough to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the current year, the one that you have yeah. now? 1963 is one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to get in. I actually, two weeks ago, I had it moved because we were trying to move some things around for better storage for our barricade. It took them um, about a day and a half to get it fired up and moved. And once you get it fired up, you don't turn it off till you're done. <laughs> so if we know, say we need it on Wednesday, we start working on it Monday to get it ready. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been we've been in need for one for quite some time. Um, so how much does it cost? The total the total price um, with freight is eighteen thousand seven hundred. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's no, what I was saying too. We got a couple of estimates. <laughs> It was about eighty-five hundred dollars less than the other two. So, no, is that because of the brand or location? Or? No, honestly, I don't know. And neither did the other two when I told them. The <laughs> it's Bomac good. That's the uh, oh, Mac. That's the same brand that Don um, Sons uses too. So it's not an off-brand one. No, no, Bomac. <laughs> it's it's a good one. <laughs> I thought maybe that's what the saving no, was. Right. Yeah, because that was one thing we questioned too. But honestly, the specs on the two, we, we checked out a cat, and the only difference on the cat was maybe 800 pounds heavier, and I think like two and a half liters more fuel and water. So it wasn't significant enough to just you know justify the 8,500 or so. Right. Um, how much do you have in that account? I mean, do you have plenty in that account to make this purchase oh, oh, yeah. okay good and do you anticipate any other equipment purchases from that account uh, not this year okay um, in fact until we're selling i can have stuff appropriated to that account for next year which okay. is what i'll probably do so okay. whatever else needs to be taken out of there you guys do you mind if i ask a couple questions yeah go ahead okay. so this is the first one was 1963 so what about your snow removal and dump trucks what where are we what's okay. your yeah what shape are the uh, snow uh, removal the trucks uh, yeah what's the shape of those what are we are uh, we're, we're in the process right now of actually working with a company to to get a five-year uh, sort of lease to own okay uh, which we'll have to discuss that too because it's it's going to be a little bit of a price tag but it's something that is very necessary, in our opinion, um, because the trucks are off, awfully old. I mean, our newest one, our newest primary, I believe, is 15 years old already. That's a lot of time. Uh, every plant truck we have, except for one, which we have 10, ten currently we use, um, was converted from a garbage truck. So we buy it as a garbage truck use it for five to eight years, then we ship it off and get it converted. Well, um, previous administration stopped buying the garbage trucks that you could convert to dump trucks. So now our garbage trucks are just our garbage trucks. And what they did in the past was it was pretty brilliant because it'd be a fraction of the cost to convert. You know, you'd get a new garbage truck, take the old one, convert it, sell the packer, and, but now that's not really an option. Uh, so how many snow trucks, I mean snow plows, did you actually have working? We we have five primary that go out and we have five secondary. So our five primary, they get, they're our newest, you know, ranging 15 to 20 years. Um, what is the life for one? Uh, well, I mean, we've got one that's 22 years old, so I mean, I wouldn't want to run them more than 10 years, you know, because then you get to the point where if you're running them too long, they become almost useless to get rid of and get anything out of them. So how are you keeping them together? Uh, <laughs> Magic. Duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty possible, and that's why we've been looking into uh, 
another option. And you'll present that at a later time. Yes. But right now, this is the main thing is the roller. Right. Right. And you have plenty of money for that. And oh, so, okay, yeah. yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. Yeah, this is your main focus right yes. now. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go okay. get him, Dagger. That's okay. It's good what we have you here to ask yeah. those questions. So that's good. But I just want to make sure, you know, we get it all just clear for the for what we're focusing on tonight. So, okay. Yeah. Is this that's like good. the other one where we're just going to talk about it and then appropriate it next month? Yes. Okay. Good. Awesome. Okay. Without so our okay. permission, because technically that non-reverting fund is like the, like he said their own personal safe you know savings account for them so it doesn't go back into the general fund and then have to be reappropriated in the new budget yeah. it's their own money city ordinance, actually, didn't it? right it has to be established by city ordinance and can only be spent for what the ordinance says you know mm -hmm. paint. so it's their savings money and they're asking you permission to to, to withdraw that money to use for that got it it's really not okay. like they're, they're not touching the general fund yeah. at all. right yeah. right okay this is their own money that's why it's coming the from their own department doesn't yep. have to sign right. off and approve of this additional appropriation mm -hmm. because it's not coming from the general fund got it they just have to be notified that it is being spent out of a non-reverting fund okay Great. good thank Perfect. you adam thanks adam thank you thanks, adam. Okay, next on the agenda, we have um, an economic development update from J Jim Tidd and Makita. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you allowed Adam to come up and kind of go off to the side because I've been sitting here looking, and unless that was a wide angle lens, I'm afraid my <laughs> wideness. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pretty good. You got a pretty good voice. Too. You could probably do it from right there, wherever you're right, comfortable. Well, if everybody's okay with that, that's. You got that's a nice voice I'll that carries. If that works, a um, couple things, and again, <laughs> appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening to talk with you about some things that are going on um, in the city and some things we're working on. Uh, the first one, and uh, Mark. Uh, kind of stole a little bit of my thunder, thunder on the trail, but an update on that as far as where we're at on that particular project. Um, there's basically just a little bit more to do. Uh, there's one section of the trail down by the ball fields that um, we have to lay base asphalt on, and then we have to come back and put a final coat of asphalt, a finished coat on the whole entire thing, and then basically seeding and grading and we'll be good to go. Uh, that project will be complete. Uh, we're looking at having that done, probably about weather permitting, uh, about the uh, 1st of May. And we've coordinated a ribbon cutting with the mayor's office for, and you'll be getting the invitation uh, coming out Saturday, May the 15th. Uh, we're looking at doing a ribbon cutting at 9 a.m. Uh, there's a organization in town that wants to uh, schedule a fun walk uh, that day. So not only will the uh, mayor and members of the city council be cutting the ribbon on the trail, but also starting the fun walk. Uh, so hopefully we'll have good weather, and good weather will bless us. Uh, Pastor, if you could say a kind of good word there. <laughs> <laughs> if we get the project finished by uh, first of May, uh, that would be great. Um, one of the other things that, in working in cooperation with the mayor's uh, office and also Rediscover and the chamber, there is a need for us to update our downtown revitalization plan. Uh, the last time our revitalization plan, I think the date on that is probably 1999 to 2000, uh, according to uh, Sandy Chittam with the chamber. So with the uh, we advertised and solicited for proposals. Uh, we received uh, three, excuse me, six proposals in total. A uh, subcommittee that included the mayor, uh, Brooke, who's um, on uh, the call with us uh, tonight, myself, uh, Jill Miles with Rediscover, and then Sandy uh, reviewed uh, those um, uh, responses. We selected three for an interview, and we selected at this time a primary consultant or primary consulting group we want to work with called HWC Engineering. 
And what we'd like to do as we're negotiating the contracts is to get them scheduled with your permission for next meeting uh, to come and give you a presentation on some of their objectives and what will be involved in the <coughs> revitalization plan and such. Uh, as we started putting that together, though, one of the things that I'm, I'm getting to it is that we realized with the YMCA uh, getting close to completion as well as a new potential housing development occurring there along the river that there's going to generate a ter terrific amount of traffic on Canal Street and probably Forest Street. And so one of the things that we wanted to include in this downtown revitalization plan was a traffic analysis with recommendations on improvements that we need to make uh, to be able to accommodate that growth in traffic. Uh, and so this is going to be part of the revitalization plan, but we feel like while we're trying to put together the funding to do the overall revitalization plan, we do re need to really get started on this traffic analysis because the YMCA's opening is going to be here uh, very soon and we need to start planning for that. So subject to my board's approval at April 14th, we're going to go ahead and contract with HWC to go ahead with that traffic analysis um, and uh, those recommendations at a cost of about 30 Oh, it's a little less than 34,000. I want to say it's about 33,300, which we'll go ahead and take care of out of Makita's funding. So at this point, we're not asking the city for any contribution on the traffic analysis. <coughs> we will, though. I don't think you got totally off. We will come back and ask for assistance with the overall revitalization plan. What we feel is something we need to move forward on now with the traffic analysis. Uh, Fifth Street parking lot. Um, as the Seven Pillars um, becomes uh, finished, uh, matter of fact, they've uh, got, as I understand, the brewing equipment in the facility now and are starting to produce uh, beverage. Uh, they're looking at an opening, I think, sometime in the June time frame. Last I talked with Chad Patterson. Uh, but that lot that's next door that's currently owned by the county is really an eyesore. Um, and so what we'd like to try to do is work out a partnership amongst city, county, Rediscover, and Makita to kind of revitalize that lot to what you see there in those pictures. Um, if you look at the picture down in the bottom left, uh, that's kind of the overview of the area that you see there in green. Uh, that's the property that's owned by Seven Pillars. So they'll be making all of those improvements. They'll have an outside seating area and all those kind of things uh, in the future. What we're talking about is basically moving the entryway over a little bit to the east, uh, re uh, taking out all of that uh, left uh, foundation system from back in the time that that was Becker Mock insurance that still fill that compacted make it ready for paving. Uh, we've got a quote from Gotten Son to come in and do all of the curbing and the paving, uh, parking barriers. Eventually, we want to put decorative fencing, ble uh, not bleachers, uh, benches <laughs> along Fifth Street, uh, columns of uh, kind of uh, um, stone columns that are like the pavers that you see uh, kind of with the entryway. So we really want to address that uh, because it is right in the middle of downtown um, and I think could be a really nice asset for use by Second Saturdays, Chris Kringle Mart, Farmer's Market, anything that's going on and in, including patrons of Seven Pillars. Uh, right now the county does not necessarily want to continue to own that lot. Uh, they feel that with them buying um, Jeff Laycock's building over here and the health department moving over there, that they may not need that for parking for uh, their employees. Um, so we're 
working out uh, something in discussions about maybe the city taking that over as a municipal lot uh, to be used just for the downtown, even though we know the courthouse patrons and other people are going to park there. But anyway, so that's something more. But we want to try to get started on this so we can get that lot rehabbed and at least the old foundation pulled, pulled out and the parking lot paved. Some of that landscaping things may come later, um, but right now we're looking at um, trying to get at least the paving and that done. Um, we're asking, or we'll be coming back asking uh, for an appropriation, possibly from the city. So these are just warnings. These are just warnings to us that we're you're gonna, we're going to see you in the future. Probably like you are. Uh, yeah, uh, subject to. You know, and we know money is tight. We're not saying that. Uh, we think this is a good investment at downtown. Uh, probably goes along with downtown beautification. Uh, and maybe that money is already appropriated. Uh, but we'll work with Mayor and Susan uh, to try to figure that out. But Rediscover's already bought into this, haven't they? Rediscover's already contributed 20000 Makita's already, subject to my court's approval, um, on Wednesday appropriated or will pledge 20000 uh, and then uh, the county, I'm asking them to transfer the lot and consider a contribution of 20. So, wasn't it around the $80,000 mark $80, to get it done? $80,000 to do roughly everything. Jim, does that so include much? new ADA compliant sidewalks and everything? Yes. You said curb. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. And we'd be able to use the sidewalk program for that as well, I would assume. Right. At one time, wasn't that supposed to be two entrances there instead of one? There is now, and that's what's confusing because they park in the middle instead of pulling in and going to either side. Yeah, this will allow one entryway. Mm -hmm. So the entryway there now actually goes onto uh, Seven Pillars property. So we're talking about moving the entryway east, kind of in that center of the lot. So there'll be one entryway in, and then you would be able to park, go to either the east or the west in two parking roads, and the center yeah. would be open. Because I was under. Just, I didn't bring a picture down, but the other mix, the other picture was involved in it was two entrance ways, one to the west, one to the east. I'm, I'm not sure what that. That's what it is currently. I've, done, I've, I've never seen that mirror, so if it's a, if it's, I, I get with you and look at that. But okay. it's, from what we've worked with with Hoffman and Hoffman Nursery is the ones that did this landscape design. Um, it was only going to be the one entryway, okay. kind of in the middle. So the main thing is, how much are you going to ask from the city? Twenty thousand. Match everybody else's. And when and will if that you be? Can do it cheaper. You know, we will. So that's sixty. So you said there was eighty. And you're going to ask the city, county for twenty. Twenty. Yeah. So four partners, twenty, twenty each. And then the other last thing, and then I'll get out of the way so you can get done this evening. Uh, deals with uh, One South Broadway, uh, the building here, which is another one of the buildings in the key building rehab program. Uh, we're hoping, again, there's a lot, a lot happening in my board meeting um, on the uh, 14th, but we're hoping to enter into an agreement with the developer, local developer, uh, on that particular building uh, as well. So there'll be more come out of that, but we're excited about the opportunities. It would be retail. And part of it, uh, possibility of apartments, second and third floor down the road. So it's not all going to happen overnight, but in phases. But uh, we have, in my opinion, we've accomplished the goal, and that was to restore the building and get it back on the tax rolls. Perfect. So, I agree. Yeah. But anyway, I'd be happy to answer any other questions, but I thank you for your time. And thank you, Jim. Sorry that I took as much as Jim, I Jim, I was just curious, getting back to the traffic analysis, are we looking at possibly, uh, you know, installing traffic light signals and, and, and things like that? Could be. I don't, I don't want if to say If you're going to have that much traffic yes, flow? Yes, well, yeah, by the time you look at the, the amount of traffic with YMCA and their capability for uh, membership, yeah. uh, child care, you're going to have a 10,000 square foot clinic. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be new to the community there. Have you heard, is there any talk about widening Canal Street? Any, you know, well, at again, any point? That, that is what we're doing this the, 
Okay. So all uh, options could be on the table. Right. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty much going into this, in my opinion, with a clean slate, with yeah. no, and letting the engineers, traffic engineers, come up with recommendations. Yeah. How well, exciting! No, Lots of good stuff coming up. I have one other question, Jim, if you don't yes. mind. Uh, okay, you mentioned that the county owns that the old jail there on the corner. No, not the. No, they own. They own the lot. Oh, they own the lot. The old old jail is yeah. owned by a private. Jim Dugan. Private interest. Is he willing to let go of that building? Well, okay. I, I, I mean, long term. Long term, yeah. I hope okay. that this right. either causes an increase in investments mm -hmm. in that property. <laughs> or maybe a willingness down the road to transfer it. Yeah. And if it is, then we could just take what we're doing here and duplicate that over. Uh, so just kind of fold that lot there right. fold it over into the next section where yeah. the jail is. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, ordinance, uh, can I get a motion to consider ordinance <coughs> number 9? 2021 an ordinance to establish an eternal control policy no moved can i get a second for that second okay roll call anderson yes dustin yes Clotho. yes russell yes sahidashini yes and wolf yes okay any discussion on this policy the city is supposed to have an internal control on um, file by ordinance and I've not been able to come across any I did come across some notes so I put together one and this ordinance is to adopt our internal controls they can be changed annually amended they're not set in stone but Susan in reading through this you're already doing almost all this anyway and you're just putting yeah. it into words basically yeah. excellent Lori and I and the mayor and Michelle and everybody that's involved with all the payroll and the accounts receiving and everything. We went kind of through everything and kind of tweaked it out. I have a couple of questions. Um, okay. I'm reading through this. It talks about the oversight committee and maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't read it, but who is the oversight committee and it's how is that appointed? Mayor, the, mayor. the clerk treasurer okay. and then one of from council. So we don't have an oversight committee yet. No, you will have to make your oversight committee once we adopt this. Okay. Okay. Is that something you want to do tonight? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> so you just need one mem member from the council right. to be on that. I, okay. I want to be in total okay. compliance. Awesome. And then I have another question, and it has to do with um, the purchasing internal controls. Okay. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah. I, was was tough one. You, I would have called you about it, but I just read it yeah. right before coming in. It says like the clerk treasurer can can get single items that are five hundred, except for certain. And it says that five hundred dollars for the mayor. The chief of police gets seventy five hundred dollars. Well, do you realize how much their equipment cost? So I mean, that's why that was yeah that in place. Tough. I mean, their uniforms alone are <clears throat> here. It's on page nine. Yeah. One uniform. Okay. So that's why yours is so much more, Danny, yeah. is because of the expenses you have, you have, the things you have to purchase. Okay. And it says like all single item or service purchases over 500 except for certain purchases by the mayor, chief of police, or <laughs> authorized personnel. And I guess I was just kind of wondering what the definition of certain authorized purchases personnel. are. That would be our department heads because we don't want to you know, put them too hard. But what is what is certain purchases? Adam? What, I'd say budgeted purchases probably. Yeah, they're, they're budgeted purchases. So should we change the... For change instance, the, like the parks went out and they uh, could have bought, I don't know what kind of equipment it was, but he paid $6,000. And actually, that's a capital asset purchase. And I had no idea until the paperwork came to me. <laughs> So, you know, this is things like the capital asset list has to be caught up with. So that has to be added to the ledger. And there's just a lot of things. So do you feel like the language is appropriate in there, Dustin? Certain purchases or budgeted purchases? 
I think certain purchases, um, just because it, it's vague enough, to, gives deference, gives room for purchases to be made. For that. <coughs> but the money has to be in the budget, obviously, to make a purchase. So mm -hmm. kind of go hand in hand. Okay. Because you can't spend money if it's not budgeted, technically. Right. <laughs> okay, that's all. I that's the only questions I had. Does anybody else have any questions on this um, internal control policy? No. That's the same oversight question. Okay, so um, if somebody can make a motion to adopt Ordinance 9 2021. So moved. Okay, anybody want to second it? Second. Okay. Okay, roll call. Anderson? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Plotho? Yes. Ramsey? Oh. No, Ramsey. Russell? Yes. Sahidachini? Yes. And Wolf? Yes. Okay, and next on the agenda is ordinance number 10, 2021, an ordinance to vacate a north-south alley in the city of Peru. Can Betsy? I get a motion to consider ordinance number 10? <laughs> Betsy, could we yeah. appoint the oversight committee person? Oh, for the sorry. Council okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Is anybody interested in serving on the oversight committee for the uh, internal control policy? I will. Uh, you sure? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Okay, she's got. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. And do a great job at it. Yeah, she <laughs> does. Okay. She is. She is do we need to definitely vote detail oriented? Yes, she I is know. A good she, one. she is. <laughs> Nothing gets fire. <laughs> That's true. Do we need to vote on that, or is it just okay just to put her on there? I think since it's appointed from, it says appointed from the council. Nomination they have to? and a vote would be fine. Okay, so on the nominee, Pat Russell. Second. And roll call. Let's see. Let's see. And Kathleen seconded. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anderson. Yes. Gustin. Yes. Lotho. Yes. Russell. Yes. Sahidachini. Yes. And Wolf. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So back to ordinance number 10, 2021. If somebody can make a motion to consider it. I make a motion to consider ordinance I second it. 1021. Okay. Roll call. Uh, right as best I can. I know. I'm sorry. Anderson. Yes. Gaston. Yes. Clotho. Yes. Russell. Yes. Sahidachini. Yes. And Wolf. Yes. I don't know if you guys have been down there and looked at it, but as you look at the alley, it goes like this, and it's closed off already. Yeah. <laughs> it's all grass. <laughs> it's already closed off. I didn't look at it, but this I This is kind of moot. I did talk to Joe about it, and I know we've got Haley on Zoom. So, Haley, did you want to mention or talk about anything about this, Allie? Um, just that the approved plan commission gives a favorable recommendation of six to zero. Um, it does look like it's already been closed off because it's all grass, and there's like a AT and T box or something like two AT feet into box. it. Yeah. And but I ha I didn't find anything anywhere that says that it has been closed off so it's kind of just a a formal thing Looks that we're like doing this in LA too. okay super then um uh, i'll make the motion to adopt ordinance number 10. second roll call anderson yes gustin yes Plotho? yes russell yes sahidachini yes and well yes Okay, moving on to ordinance number 11, 2021, an ordinance to vacate an undeveloped street in the city of Peru. Can somebody make a motion to consider ordinance number 11? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything that you want to add on that one, Haley? Uh, the Peru plan commission. Oh, sorry. Right. Roll call. Sorry. Anderson? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Clotho? Yes. Russell? Yes. Yes. And Wolf. Yes. Sorry about that, Haley. <laughs> You're fine. Okay, so the Peru Planning Commission gives a favorable recommendation of six to zero. And um, I also have, there's Carrie Ashby. She's the one that has requested to vacate it. She and her husband own 121 East Canal. And they're the ones that are wanting to uh, close it and possibly put up a fence. Uh, they're wanting to put in a business there, so Does do you guys have anything? any questions? I don't have any questions. Because she's on here if you have any questions about why. I don't have any questions. Does anybody else have any questions about no. it? No. 
Okay, then if somebody wants to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 11. I make a motion to adopt that ordinance. Okay, second. Second. Okay, roll call. Anderson? Yes. Justin? Yes. Soto? Yes. Rant Russell? Yes. Ty Dockery? Yes. And Wolf? Yes. All right, then moving on to communications. Does anybody have anything um, that they would like to talk about? I just have one uh, item, uh, Betsy, if you don't mind. Sure. I, which I heard, and I'm following up, and I think it's a good thing for Peru, uh, the Rediscover uh, Peru uh, uh, organization. Uh, this is the first uh, time they're having a band competition, and I thought that's really cool All right, to, to maybe bring more people in. Uh, it's planned during that uh, Cole Porter Weekend Festival, and they're having a band competition at the Moose Lodge. So uh, just trying to create a little buzz. I think that's a real positive thing uh, for Peru. I agree. Does anybody have anything else? I, I had one thing. Okay. but I, He left. Okay. I wanted to thank... Thank Rev. him. I mean, he has been so active in so many things in this community. Yeah. I wanted to thank him. Thanks, Brett, wherever <laughs> you are. Yeah, he just did the Easter egg. Getting next and, yeah. One thing I want to thank everybody on the city council for being back tonight. It's uh, been a terrible year for all of us. And I appreciate the job you guys have done and the job you continue to do. Thank you. And thank you, thank you Mayor. I have a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I wanted to uh, just mention is I know that we're losing a member of our team, Ashley Lowe, the administrative assistant to the mayor. Um, her last day was today, and she's just always been so helpful and helped me with uh, anything that I needed as long as I've been on the city council. And I know she's served the city in the prior administration and also this year in this administration and so I just wish her well in the future um, and then my other thing that I wanted to just ask the council about is there's a new board that's been started it's called the pre community development corporate corporation and um, I believe that the board is appointed by the mayor and Carrie Young's on that Mark Sablisk Brenda Douglas Tammy Gallahan um, Shiniak and Bill Guarto and this is a new uh, new corporation that's been established and I was just wondering if there is a chance that we should maybe have a liaison or somebody from the council involved in this board. That's Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Pat's plates full. So. <laughs> the city's only involvement with that board is the, technically is the mayor nominating board directors um, it's not a city organization, it's a non-for-profit um, that is in and of itself its own entity. And for the liaison to be appointed, it have to be approved of by their board. Otherwise, there's mm -hmm. no, okay. no chance, no shot at that. So why is the mayor the one that appoints it if it has nothing to do with the city? Because that's how they elected to have their board directors. Who's uh, they? Powers. Uh, that board, when they approve their bylaws, it, that's what's in the Okay, that, the board is they. Yeah, yeah sorry, the, the CDC board. So how did that initial board get appointed then? They were appointed by this administration. They were appointed uh, by this administration, and then they created bylaws that said only they, this mayor could appoint to this board? Not, it's not only this mayor, it's any mayor in the future. And this was started under the previous administration. It was just right. finalized and seemed to wish fruition under this administration so um, the appointing of the mayor or the mayor appointing the positions was the idea of the previous administration as well so it was just followed through it's it's an easy way to appoint and it's that way the board doesn't get controlled by who it wants to and, and the city does have some type of say it's just who's the oversight or uh, the IRS State of Indiana, non profit. There is, I mean, it's just a typical non profit. Okay, well, I just wanted to throw that out there, and maybe that's something that the board, that their board would consider, you know? I mean, there's some free thinkers on that board for sure. I know Carrie, I know Mark, 
you know, so maybe they would consider um, having a liaison just so that we can be kept in the loop. And I know at a couple board of works meetings in the past, I had asked about it and hadn't been established yet. And Ron had promised to kind of keep me in the loop on it. So I'm hoping that I will be kept in the loop Ron as does. he promised. Yeah. Ron does, does have anything to do with it, does he? No, but. He took my he question at the board of works meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I beg your yeah, that's okay. Um, let's I guess that could be something that could be brought up at one of their next board meetings. Um, I don't know what, when, or how they're <coughs> meeting or how they're going to choose to meet, but I believe the chair of that is Brenda Douglas. I believe she's the chair. She's so, the chair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I believe. I'm, I think she is. Yeah. So, so if three years from now we have another mayor, that board is completely dissolved and they start all over again? No, I mean, it, they reserve, or they're appointed until they resign. Mm -hmm. Um, voted off by the other board of directors, and then if there's a vacancy, whatever mayor, say 20 years down the road, if it's still going, can appoint. And it's supposed to be independent, non-political. Right? So there's they don't have to, like a municipal board has to be from the same party, blah, blah, blah. So they don't deal with that, and hopefully it's nonpartisan to begin with. So. Okay, that's all I had. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.